Hi class and welcome to United States History, History 405. I am Professor Moore and I am super excited to be with you guys for the next eight weeks as we learn about U.S. history. So, all right, a couple notes about class. So, um, if you've already found this video and you were watching Arta Lecture, good job. That means then you've already been around class, you've seen the announcements, you've hopefully watched that welcome video, and, um, and so you kind of already, hopefully everybody is on track with us starting class successfully. Reach out to me for anything that you guys would need with class. I'm here for you, okay guys? So, um, each week we will have office hours. Those will be on Tuesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and on Sundays from 10 a.m. to noon Central Standard Time. Now, office hours are not mandatory. So, you know, you, so what that means is that you don't have to show up. There's no agenda. We don't do any lectures or anything. It's just uh, basically me, uh, me, devoting some lifetime that I have those days each week. So if you get in touch with me live and talk to me, you can. Now you can always reach me by email. So so then I uh, 24 to 40 uh, I've had some glitches here lately and I haven't been seeing some emails. So guys, if I haven't got back to you by if it's going on a second day, send me another email so I can make sure that I am indeed getting your email. So yeah, if you haven't heard from me within two days, there's something fishy going on. with it. Not email me, but I do. And if I don't answer the phone, just leave me a message. Same, same thing there, guys. I'll get back to you. And on that day, I'm okay at the latest. So, um, so, all right. So the office hours, yeah, it's basically like in the traditional, you know, thing. So we were actually in a school classroom, actual physical classroom. You know, your instructors, you're going to have an office in that building. So when they're not teaching classes, they're going to be that if you need to go talk to they're available. So that's what our office hours are for too. And uh, last note on that is um, if you do want to talk to me and you can't make it then I uh, simply uh, we can work out a time go in the office and we can private chat. So, you know, it'd just be you and I in there be able to see each other and talk and all that good stuff. So, all right, guys. So, announcements. So, yeah. So, um, announcements are where I important information in class. I'll share, you know, a, a, uh, things like these videos. You see our weekly guidances, our lectures, which are the videos. Ah, um, other resources, um, reminders of assignments grades, when uh, feedback, you know, when you have your grades and feedback, I will always post in the next. So um, it's important that you you kind of make a routine of taking those when you come into class so that you don't miss something that is at that week. And then if you go into the modules, got to make sure I have that in there for you guys. I'll check here when I get in class today. So when, uh, when you go into the modules and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see that I've got some uh, APA tips or resources, and I've got some writing tip resources in there to help you guys. And then you're going to see a folder called Check My Draft. Check My Draft, this is a place where you can submit all your work so that you can check your grades and similarity scores and you can um check your grammar and writing because i have it set for you and um it's important we always follow the 80 20 rule of originality with all our work where we write in 80 percent our own work and we have no more 
than 20% turned it in school. Now for Chamberlain, they do allow us to go up to 30%, but um, I, I would, I would um, encourage you guys to try to do the 80, 20. It seems a little daunting at first, but um, it gets easier, you know, the more you write and the more you get used to it. And uh, basically, you know, it's just, um, you want to write in your own words and, uh, you know, look at the textbook and look at what you're reading and, uh, you know, try to copy that. That's okay. You know, as long as you're saying it in your own words and then at, and, and along those lines too, guys, you know, keep it simple, keep it basic that, you know, as long as you're keeping it simple, you're keeping it basic, you're following that 80, 20 rule, you're including those APA elements, you know, you're more guaranteed to do a good job on this assignment than you are as opposed to, you know, just like having a paper that's mostly copied and paste and not really taking over. So, you know, when I see the effort and see you're trying, we can always work those kind of things out. Okay, guys. And because in a physical classroom, discussions are an important part of class. So, um, you know, this is uh, disseminate information and, and the topics that we are learning for that week and build our community by learning and so it's important that you know get in there <coughs> me, at least two days each week. And so we recommend that you get that initial post done on Wednesday. And then pretty much that gives you the whole week and weekend to get to your participation post. Now I do, I know that everybody has schedules, but I do try to encourage you guys, don't wait until Sunday to get in there and uh, engage in the discussions. Like I said, you know, there's gonna be information in there that will help you in the assignments and other aspects of class. And, you know, when you um, when, when you get in there on the last day, you don't have a lot of opportunity, um, you know, for learning and growing because, you know, if you see something interesting that you wanna talk about or you have questions about something, you've kind of lost the opportunity for that because if you come in and do that on Sunday, all that's going to remain unanswered because by Monday morning, we've moved on to the next week. Does that make sense, guys? Make sure you all were good rule of APA requirement is one paragraph, and then you want to have that contraction full search source reference list at the bottom. And um, I do have a basics of APA video. If you're watching this video, you should, um, I believe it'll either be with included in the announcement, the lectures, or there will be another announcement and it'll say basics of APA. It's super, short, super comprehensible. And uh, we go over the most basic way to include your APA, make sure that you're indeed, um, you know, putting your information in the correct APA form, and then, you know, reach out to me for any guys. I'm here to help you be successful any way that I can, and if it's from, you know, just taking over your work, a room, you know, looking at, uh, at your draft to help you figure out how to get your similarities you know, anything, guys. That's something in APA. If you need help finding research, reach out to me, guys. I'm here. So, all right. So, let's go ahead and get started with our lecture this week. I mean, we spent a little longer with the lecture because we're trying to, you know, get everything. And we're setting the stage of class. So I want I like starting out with this world map. So this is the world we live in, all the different countries and uh, all the land mass, all the water. So to set stage for uh, you know take us back to the uh, world 
of uh, colonial America and, and even before that, we kind of have to set the stage by going back to the age of exploration and kind of starting there on the back end of the 1400s to where we are. And so we'll start off by imagining that we are there during that time period, right? We are in explorers or Native Americans. But, um, you know, at that time, we didn't know what the world looked like. And what I really like about this particular ma map, it's actually, it's a map showing political, um, uh, I don't know the word, uh, associations, um, political areas of the world. But what, I, but what strikes me when I look at this map is all the color. I see a lot of color and a lot of diversity. And, uh, you know, and looking at all that color and thinking about diversity, it makes me think of us humans and it makes me think of culture and how we are all a mix of different people and these different cultures and different beliefs to us. And we're all, you know, different colors as far as skin and hair and eyes and all those wonderful things that make human. Now, of course, you know, there are some pretty wicked and Add wicked and uh, heinous things that make us human too. In the you know here at the beginning of contact and uh, when Europe you know discovered the Americas, um, there definitely was a conflict. Also, a lot of learning opportunities too. You know, at that time we didn't know what the world looked this way. Had a very limited view. And so here is Sebastian Munster's map of the New World from 1540. Uh, so a very different view of what people thought the world looked like, right? And what I find really interesting about this map, I would say this is um, you know, it pretty much like South America there, maybe southwestern part of the American uh, continent up there at the top. I mean, we see the Florida Keys, we see Cuba, but I find it interesting that, that there's a lot of water, especially if you look where we're probably you know, Mexico. No, actually now that I look at, and that's supposed to represent the ocean there. Okay, so it's right there, all that water top of South, America there, you see where it says uh, the newest Orbis. And uh, I wonder if in making that map, if uh, the Amazon River had anything to do with why they would think that that part of the continent had so, you know, was like pretty much part of the ocean there. I wonder what the Amazon River was doing at that time. And because we know American of the American and the seventies, eighties with all uh some of the devastation going on down there. But anyway, so this is what people thought of the Americas at this time. All right, so when overseas explorers brought the hemispheres together, Native American European explorers, you know, call each other as strange as alien, you know, they, they were dealing with each other. First time, you know, discovering, you know, the native people, you know, they were trying to figure out what they were doing. And, uh, you know, the needs and the demands of these uh, strange newcomers trying to work it out and even above you know native Americans we also had slave trade going on at this time and so in addition to those cults you know we had the African people over here um and because of slavery and so you know we had you know even with the cultures we had Uh, 
English. Now, this one was unique in their own way, too. Group coming in contact with each other, right? And so what do we see? We see violent con conquest, we see complex technology, food, a pathogen, ideas, and styles. You know, we groups they fought and killed each other. And then, you know, over time they often found ways to cooperate and accommodate one another. So of course we typically like to say that Europe, Christopher Columbus, discovered America. And you know, you can't really discover something that already had cultures living there for thousands, tens of thousands of years, right? But at the same time, you know, when it comes to uh, European cultures, even, you know, the African continent, you know, they're on the land mass that are pretty much, a lot of them are to each other. A lot, you know, they, they all speak in contact. It would be really far far that Europe didn't have a clue about. 1800s, right? Which is how Christopher America, which is why we tend to refer to the uh, native people as Indians. And, you know, that that's uh, true for here in North America. In Canada, I call them Indians. In America, we get called, you know, it's because when they thought that he found that new history of India. And so he thought that he was dealing with a type of Indian. Right? Here, I think this is a really cool It kind of gives us an idea of what life was like in America. So, culture had been developing. And then, you know, tens of thousands of years, if not hundreds of thousands of years. And there is some archaeological evidence. Thousand years on the American continent. And um, for the most part, this continent, it's a very diverse continent, and especially here on the uh, southeast, north, 1900s, you know, really Indian cultures long agricultural times and then um we and then you know as a result of that we see some of the most sophisticated um ancient civilization the Mayans, the Incas, Olmecs, the Toltecs, um here in the southeast. It would be the uh Mississippi culture. Um when you start getting a little more up like Kentucky and the and the Ohio Valley, you have the Adena culture and uh, then sure those were renowned building cultures you've heard of like the serpent mound in ohio or uh places like this or uh spear mounds down in uh oklahoma and uh, i'll stop there because i could go on and on i did my uh, master's degree mound building uh, the associations with that. So anyway, so I won't go off on a tangent. I think this is a really cool picture of seeing that kind of uh, agriculture farming, right? And so we know that uh, the people living in the or uh, you know they they were different cultures. Not all Native Americans are. The same, you know, you got Cherokee, you got Lakota, you got, you know, you got the group uh, and uh, Canada, and then Pacific Northwest, you have different um, uh, Indian, and you get to the Southwest, you have like the Anasazi, Blackfoot, you know, uh, Chinos, all sorts of different cultures. So, all in all, more than thousand culture. Um, they spoke 700 different 
which is, and uh, then like I said, you know, most of the people living here, you know, make that balance of, of the culture and, uh, you know, making the most of the resources of where they live. Now, I mean, in many ways, that wasn't similar to how people in Northern Africa lived. I mean, they had to farm, they had to hunt, they had to fish. The difference is that, you know, in that, uh, in that and in the African continent, so, you know, people were enslaved in, in those cultures, even, even in Europe, you know, long, and even though most people were the agriculture, you know, there, there was no sharing of those resources because those over and all of it, right? don't really see that as much. Now, of course, there are specific cultures that just like with any civilization, the closer you get to those like main cultural hubs of civilization, what, what would it say, like the big cities, you know, so they're big cities of the time, like Cahokia, there was definitely more political and social hierarchies going on um, down here in the South. East. Um, I'm in Tennessee, but in Georgia, there is Moundville. You know, we know that there were leaders and a hierarchy there. But once again, people were farming, all right? And so uh, farming, the maize, um, beans, squashes, and corn, that all um, uh, originated in Mexico. And then it spread out. America, North, spread south of the continent, and um, about 2,500 years ago. <clears throat> and then, you know, by the end of the Stone Age, um, we see that, you know, communities, they, they, they have independently created these systems of farming that wouldn't be had been created. Um, oh, my mind's failing me on one of the first cultures like the Sumerians and, you know, they were so great with agriculture and, you know, without even knowing it and having no on this side of the world, have to own a way of agriculture too. Say corn, beans, corn, tomatoes, maize, which would be like, a, you know, maize is used to like make flour and make bread. So the uh, main crops that we grow around here. And then uh, there still have the homes that you see with buildings on top of them. Build town center, or, or I don't know really what you would uh, call that. So there is a museum. And so you can go and walk around. Actually, it's, it's pretty big, guys. I can't even remember. There's one in Miami. I don't know. Now and on uh, North America too, and uh, it's kind of cool. They got it shaded off, but uh, it's right at the go and hang out at the park and kind of like enjoy, you know, this like cool Native American. A lot of places in Ohio, you see these Hopewell and uh, Tina. My parents were about they kind of grew up in those areas. Like naturally, like no wonder got into it. I, I was always heard about one. So here, um, ah, go. I should have read my notes. That light place we were looking at is the sacred ceremonial center. So basically, what that means is that that was like the area where they would do all the rituals. 
that would be probably where they would like hold court. And like I said, there there's probably some market exchange stuff going on there too. And then what we have on the other side is just a uh, a map that is showing us of those mounds and then next. We have a picture. Hang on, guys. Here. And next, we just have some different examples of um, the types of houses here lived in. So we see a long house, one on the bottom. We see a wigwam at the top and we see a tp from out west and uh, so you know once again the way that uh people would build their housing here in america is kind of based on their environment based on where they live right and so what we see here oh there we go so just some maps Showing us those main uh, um, areas of Spanish exploration. Now, before um, the English, French got here from Spanish, the Spanish explorers, they, they really had a key role in uh, discovering most of the North America, especially when it comes to kind of the and most especially here in the South eastern part of the United States, places like Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia, and then like here in Tennessee, you know, the concrete big hole and uh cold and uh, really devastated the um native cultures that were living here. You know, the the uh, Cherokee Trail of Tears is where they marched up all the Indians and made them walk to Oklahoma and uh, you know they basically they it was a death march and thousands upon thousands of people died and you know before they relocated out to Oklahoma. So um this is the beginning of all of that. So we just you know see the uh the routes and the areas that the Spanish traversed and that too and we see here at the uh, bottom is the uh, ravages of smallpox and this is really cool because this is a depiction of what is called the Aztec codex and it's one of the few pieces of uh, writing that we actually have from the Aztec culture and so uh, you know this was their depiction of smallpox And then um, this is just a uh, picture because uh, this shows the French beginning their expo uh, exploration of the American continent. And uh, it's really a lot different. The French Native Americans had their problems generally as far as all the explorers went. Um, the French were a lot more easy going, intended to get along better, to integrate into the Native American culture. Once again, that's really true for places here in the Southwest, uh, the Southwest, I don't know where I am today. The South, certainly was thinking Southwest of me, Louisiana, you know, Louisiana is uh, the state that has this uh, cool mix of these different cultures. You know, you really see how the European, the Native American and uh, you know those African together to make up a Bayou Asian country and uh, Louisiana was one of my most favorite places to work in archaeology. Good food, good people, crazy nature. But anyway, so this is a really great picture. What I really like about it the most is that uh, it dig that that crazy well that's out there in front. And you think, you know, this is supposed to be the Florida coast. So just note kind of the differences there too, but a uh, pretty cool picture, right? 
All right. And so by the time we get to the English being a for the um before the Puritans got here to America, they were other explorers. Now of course, you know, there's the whole Viking, so you know that Norse people were over here in North America, any other culture even before Columbus came over here. There's evidence on the West Coast, cultures, you know, some of the ancient artifacts, ancient artifacts, that's redundant here. Some of those artifacts we see from South America, like with the Mayan culture, you know, some of those people speculate the way that the figures are depicted and, and the way they look, that they have more of these maybe kind of Asian type features. And then, of course, you know, some people just think it was all aliens because of Von Danigan and, and aliens theory there. So regardless of what it was, you no. Know, People were in America before Columbus ever heard it. And, you know, I don't think it is too far fetched to believe that, um, you know, you know, people have been traveling by boat and sea for way. I mean, you know, we, we are talking about hundreds, thousands of years. You know, there, there are some people that have been around that. And you know, they experience and they know how to make like that. And so that's why I don't and and, and a lot of them like um, Polynesian culture. You know, a lot of you guys um those Polynesian cultures in, in that part of the specific ocean, you know, there are islands, there's Lot of different islands, you know. Hawaii isn't just one island; it's a bunch of different islands. And then once again, there are other countries and cultures around them that are on islands. And so, um, you know, they had been in touch with each other for a long, long time. You know, just because Europe didn't know about it, didn't need to have more, you know, communicating with each other. So it's not too far fetched to think that somebody wayward. And ended up in, on, on the American continent, you know, be it all the way down at the bottom down there and what, you know, Chile. They were like, you know, they came from the other side through like Greenwich and then over into um, um, Canada. And so when you think about like the Norse culture, they were living. And you do have when islands around it from uh, that's even though they didn't have writing, they didn't have the communication systems and networks that we do today. Like that, you know, when the king and prince queen of France funded Columbus to to try to find to get to uh you know they, they knew these stories or probably went up and to this I'm like yeah you know the the this is why they, they realized that the earth wasn't flat and it was round because you know they he Magellan he sailed all the way around from the uh guys so left and went east came back from the west you know of course he didn't hit uh, but I'm like you know they're probably any of episodes of that, right? So, anyway, so one of the first attempts was colonizing America was Owen Oak. And of course, you know, Owen Oak is a uh, historical mystery because we don't really know what happened to the people at Owen Oak. And, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, Everybody died from disease because it wasn't just uh, native indigenous people. They were coming in contact at the time. You know, when it comes to DNA and different environment, um, different people, different not really even that. But, you know, 
and can't that matter in those days. And so, you know, a lot of Europeans didn't survive, um, you know, their first adventures into America. So, you know, you have a lot of the Native people dying. You have a lot of European people dying uh, quickly. You know, that's why they were using slaves from the African cultures, because they had already built up a resistance to um, a lot of the diseases. Things like mosquitoes, pigs, you know, that the environment is something that, especially when we get in South America, was linked to some of the environment in the African culture. You know, they had better, they had those um, proficient immune system compared to the other. And then, of course, when it comes to what happened with Roanoke, some people think of. I mean, you get one thing is werewolves, vampires, that maybe just Indians just uh, massacred and slaughtered all of them. We don't, but um, Roanoke is definitely one of, uh, it's, it's definitely an interesting story, and it's the first ten attempts of the English at colonization. Mm -hmm. Right, so like we said, so as we've already talked about, Columbus, you know, when it came to Europe, I mean, they, they, you know, once again, everybody was living agriculturally, but, you know, it was different. You know, um, well, they were mostly peasants who, who, who were forced to do the agriculture. They ruled over as here in this, uh, you know, here in the American continent, have, you know, the idea of and somebody on the resources you can eat for food that really did not exist in America. You know, that, that was definitely a culture size, right? And then predominantly um, Roman Catholic, Spanish Inquisition, um, Roman Catholic, and a lot of people. Those can be pretty brutal people living in Western Europe. So, the of, uh, you know, of exploration, because people would come back and they would tell these wonderful grandiose tales of all these wonderful, strange, exotic places, and they came back and they had all these beautiful, you know, porcelain, and, and I know that first imagined that stuff was not all, you know, all this I know, because it was what was now the dollar store, plastic, way type of real crazy. Now there are wonderful spices and these beautiful silks and these beautiful pieces of porcelain. And then, you know, these wonderful trees. And then, you know, you get here these stories of the, the mounds and the mound builders. You have the stories of South America with all the wonderful stuff. You think of like the Mayan temple. So you see how people living in Europe you know, these poor peasants who were, you know, having the Roman Catholic Church pretty much to, uh, you know, go off on this new adventure to this new world. And, and you know, basically just like and, and get a new one. We don't really do that nowadays. But of course, then, you know, um, All right, so yeah, so of course, you know, yeah, we don't really do that that much these days, but because of those things that were going on in Europe, well, maybe some people were like, and then, you know, the idea of, uh, we have this power hungry control and 
be this poor peasant, you know, busting your butt for this uh, overlord here in Europe, or you can go to this new place and uh, you beating everybody up. That was way more tempting, right? You know, the Portuguese, they were the first to um, uh, um, start exploration and uh, pretty much got around the world. And, uh, you know, Henry the Navigator was one of the famous one. Of course, the Portuguese were pretty famous for establishing the Atlantic slave trade. Them to be successful, Marinander and Timurs in the Caribbean and South America. You know, they really, um, they did a lot of sugar plantations. That was the real big thing. And so they needed that slave labor. And then, like I said, because of contact, had, uh, most of the Europeans, most of the native people had died off. So that was another reason that, uh, you know, the slave trade ended up. I just said, you know, these human tendencies that we have to want more and, and to have all the toys and to be the ones in charge. And, you know, why you go from being a peasant, having people being mean to you to turn around and mean people that I'll never understand. Um, so that's the his departure before we even arrived. But just uh, reiterating, so now it's Columbus. You know, Christ never made it continent of North America. It was, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, I, I think Jordan now used to be San Salvador. And Puerto Rico. Well, I can't uh, think of the other Cayman Islands. Yeah. Evidence of human beings ever living on the Cayman Islands until Columbus on them. So good job, Columbus. You at least covered something, right? <laughs> and then what do we see here? So my like I said earlier, when the Spanish got here to North America, I mean, it was pretty much, they were like kids in a candy store, except violent, if you know what I mean, you know, because they only ran amok, and, uh, you know, um, De Soto, Ferdinand De Soto, the main Spanish conquistador at um, that, that southeastern um, Alabama, Mississippi, and etc. Because that's where I got my bachelor's degree in archaeology. My professors were all about DeSoto, and there's actually DeSoto Caverns down there near um, Talladega, I believe. It's over in Talladega, or uh, yeah, I believe it's over in Talladega, somewhere, somewhere around Talladega. It's been a long time since I've been there. But uh, they were really big into the photo, and uh, the photo was just brutal. I mean, he would murder that villages on fire when the Indians wouldn't tell him where all the gold and the silver and all the gems were, because uh, actually, this part of the United States and then the Appalachian Mountains, especially like is uh, right is the blue northern Georgia. In Carolinas, North, it would be North Carolina, I believe, but the Carolinas, Georgia, and uh, Tennessee, right where all three of, of those states meet in the Appalachian Mountains, there actually are lots of gemstones. If you've ever been to that area, gemstone and rhinestone places, all, I mean, they're all over the place because that's a main a place, you know, those. And those uh, precious gems and, and metal type. And so 
when the Spanish conquistadors got here, you know, they're seeing all these, all these things and, and you know, they're, they're, they're greedy. They want more and they want more and they want to know where they are and they want to know why the Indians are hiding it all from them. And so they would burn five in villages and, you know, they would, they burn them, they'd circle them, they'd burn them alive, they'd try to uh, come out of the village they would set them on fire again. And now the reason we know this is because we have detailed accounts of uh, DeSoto's adventures, I guess you guys say that kind of tongue in cheek, adventures because he had this um, Catholic priest with him. He had a young priest who was able to read and write. And so that priest kept the diary, the diary. And I mean, he wrote down everything. Um, also DeSoto used to keep a pack with him and uh, he pretty much he feeds Indians to the dogs so he like kept these dogs starved so that he could feed people alive to them and you know that that's not even that's a mean right? once we get out to the southwest too we see those kind of things happening with uh, the explorers and then especially when the missionaries got into the Southwest. If you've ever been to Texas, New Mexico, along that area, especially Texas, you see a lot of old abandoned of uh, the Spanish missionaries. And, you know, that really was the case of they came over here and if people didn't convert to Catholicism, that once again, they would burn them alive. They would just murder them. It really was convert or die. And of course, you know, more, Native Americans chose to convert than not, and we know that because of things like archaeological and archaeological excavations that they've done on some of these missionaries, and and you know they found these mass grave sites of the Indians. So you know, so once again, it really wasn't. You know, we we say that disease and. Uh, weapons, you know, because the Spanish uh, had guns and the Indians didn't is how the Spanish were on. And I'm like, no, it's because the stand they were dirty and underhanded and they did like horrible things that you that I'm sure, you know, anybody was like, what is it? Why are you doing this? So, you know, it really makes you think about what were people thinking. And I would kind of propose that um oh by the time uh, you know they they probably were insane and we absolutely know it more because you have stories of they hit the store jumping out even women killing people it's like they hadn't even got off the and this is how they were acting. And, you know, that with the colonization, Australia was a penal colony. Uh, uh, England, Britain, bad in Britain, they kicked it out. Desert island, they, you know, never pretty much like, you know, once again, they didn't there but yeah some of the things that uh happened the australian aboriginal ecological of, of the heinous things that we do as humans because you know none of us are really to any human behavior and uh, you know, uh yeah once again then then you try to start it, it makes my mind then start going really to like morals and ethics and you know at this even though all these people were, uh, you know, they had religion fighting them, it sure seems like they really didn't have that uh, sense of ethics and, and, you know, didn't know how to control and compose. And uh, so, map, we're just looking at some of those different routes, so some of those um, voyages being taken and we're seeing grade goods because we have to remember that and again exploring and you know we we created 
this global network and like global community, even though we're still, you know, lots of conflict and we're different cultures and different things. We are a global world because of trade, because we all, you know, no matter where you live in, even in, in, in you know, part, even in really remote still getting sugar and rice for sugar. You know, these this trade system that was so much in the hundreds is a very much our lives now, right? You know, very much more so than we have we have more products than we have now. So you know it's really and this this beginning system of trade of float out and find around because it may not be the best, most sustainable way of living. All right, so when the Spanish first did here, once again, they did some really heinous things to people that they're see there. I don't know, I told you, I love that on our slide. It just says he was spreading disease. It doesn't tell you all the other heinous things. Right? And so uh, just a little timeline. We see failed attempts in Florida. Vodka. I'm still for everybody but DeSoto because I've heard his name so much. Most of the rest of them are probably going to search. And then um, by was uh, 15, 34, probably about. 1545, if I remember correctly. Some crazy stuff. And I did that. You know, the Navy died when he fell in, or somehow went on to live. It's like he just like his death and he ended up like going somewhere else and getting a new identity and lived out the luxury no one knows and then by 1539 we have tornado out there in the southwest looking for these famed lost gold and then um you know because the didn't find those lost cities of gold. I mean, there's still stories of there being lost cities of gold, especially down the Amazon River. What we see is pretty much the next 50 years. So, you know, from the 1500s to uh, almost, the, you know, about the late 1600s, Spain is uh, kind of lost interest in the south and the southwestern part of America by the late. 16th century, you know, the Spanish, they had a very powerful American empire. There's like in your skin, um, you know, most, uh, you know, half of the, a half, stand back, my side, 125,000 African slaves. And then, of course, you know, we still have um, probably say, at least comparable to the number of African slaves. There we have the Native American population. When it comes to the Spanish explorers, you know, it's really maybe 10% of women up until World War II, that's where we, we see those statistics change and we have more women immigrating. We see more people from Spain and Portugal leaving Europe and South America out of those and men. And because they didn't have, you know, the they didn't even have cell phones right? I mean, they have no way of getting in contact with the other part of the world for, you know, these diaries and letters and, you know, these ships going back and forth. 
if the ships even made their journeys, right? A lot of time, these colonies, they were very isolated. And so we say the, there was this frontier of inclusion. And it's because, you know, you have all these different groups living together. So, you know, different communities are going to form in different and, you know, I'm talking about all these heinous things that the uh, Spanish conquistadors did when they came here to uh, North America and South America. And, you know, that, once again, I still have to realize that, you know, what we're doing here and how they are down now, not all of them were doing that. Yeah, there were a lot of them doing heinous things. But my point is, is that we have to remember that you know these frontiers of exclusion there were also areas for these cultures and working successfully with each other and and you know they they didn't you know they, they that's all they had was each other to depend on so they didn't get into all those politics of who was slave and who was indigenous and who was european you know everybody worked together because you know survival was the name of game All right, and so once again, we'll trade and not this idea of conquest of everybody being these gold and riches and, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, I guess over here in America, it really was about trade. It was getting these commodities and making money off of it because what that meant for these different European countries is it, it was a power game. You know, the more trade routes that, that their ships could secure, the more trade goods they had in their country, you know, they had an advantage. And, you know, they had this advantage for European cultures. All right. So now, once again, we get to the Atlantic side, North America. I mean, you know, once again, I keep saying that over. And, you know, down here and to the southeast. And just that whole, you know, this side of the Mississippi River, especially during this time, you know, very abundant and uh, plentiful land because of the great environment that is on this part of the continent, right? And uh, so fish, trapping, animal, that's the furs, you know, a lot of beaver, a lot of foxes, bobcats, and of course, you know, at this time, there were still elk and deer and bear were all very plentiful on this part of America. And so, you know, that a lot of people just to come explore. Nobody was really like looking to actually set up these communities and like, you know, these places. It was probably just own groups, you know, a couple of groups of guys going out to do their fishing and then you know how it transported to America. Oh, I know my husband likes to watch those shows like The Deadliest Catch and like the the gold show out in the middle of nowhere. They're doing these I would imagine it was like that. Like you know like I think it was one like the deadliest catch where they go get the crabs. The, a lot of what they're doing with the ocean, you know, trying to uh, their their quotas and and get crabs or whatever else fish they're doing. That is probably pretty similar to what these early Europeans who who were here as trappers and as fishers were uh, going through. Right? Uh, so along with the a lot of French, you know, the French were very successful, successful in America, uh, uh, you know, trapping and fishers. And that's why, like I said, they still had trouble and had their fights with uh, the Native Americans, like in the Seven Year War. But for the most part, the, those bigger pockets. The Native American communities and, and you know those African slaves all came together and, and formed own subcultures, if you 
for sweet or rod. So the French in many ways they were and the other European groups that natives encountered still, you know, still own it. You know, that that Christian uh, and Beavers over that caused a lot of conflict between the Europeans and the Indians, and then at the same time, you know, trading Indians. Now I'm doing the hard work in and processing the furs. They would just get the Indians to do it, and then you know they had their own network going there. But of course, yes, we have <clears throat> we have disease war, and then you know, change the cultures with Native Americans too, because now they uh, started to become dependent on these items. So you know, for Europeans. Type stuff, you know, a lot of times they're um, beads and, and other so brooches, buttons, uh, 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 cups, what are those called? Cup rings. I'm trying to think of some of the stuff we found on uh, Spanish sites down there in uh, Alabama when I was working in archaeology, but things like that would be those items. And then, you know, of course, then weapons were a big thing that started to get uh, 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 traded. And uh, so just like in other parts of the world where Europe colonized, you know, they took away people's ability to provide for themselves and, and kind of made them junkies because, you know, they had to had to get everybody dependent on these uh, European goods and, and, you know, people weren't able to really survive on their own. Now that's a little different. America compared to uh, the African continent and South American continent, because in the African continent and the South American continent, they started feudalism and slavery like instantly with colonization. What I mean by that is that you know, they they were claiming so much land at one time and, and enslaving the people so much, and that uh, compared to uh, North America, you know, people here had a lot of freedom before they truly it to be encroached upon and have to worry about those things. It really wasn't until, you know, westward expansion in the United States, where we say the days of you know, the cowboy and Indian days, that's when uh, a lot of Native American uh, cultures really got destroyed too here in the uh, Northeast and Southwest and, and South, <laughs> called Southwest and Southeastern part here is because, you know, they pushed all those past river and then you know not only was that causing conflict because they're transferring people you have all these new immigrants coming over to settle there's still people living in the past you know they're getting transplanted and I believe we will talk about that more in weeks when we look at westward expansion we're definitely touching on it all right so like I said Specifically, being involved in the American trade, and you know, you know, getting these crazy dogs, and it's you know, wars that you know they were they were going back and forth. Um, but Sir Francis Drake is probably one of the most famous ones with Elizabeth the first because uh, you know. Drake, I mean, he was over here in the colonies, like, captain as, as kind of like a political person. He would go back there to uh, England, and he was like, you know, Queen Elizabeth. And these sea dogs were pretty important because they were the ones that that supposedly were really given the true story, especially, like you said, uh, when it comes to Elizabeth and England here, you know, they were giving her the true story of what going on in America, what was really being found there, and how England was going to get stronger because of their investment. Now,
as I, you know, we said she's Hollandese. Well, Queen Elizabeth never came over here. She is the first queen, you know, the first person in, in uh, Britain, England, and to uh, kind of set that. All right, rather than this, these, uh, we're going to send people over there. We're really going to lay, uh, you know, claim that land because we're going to make it new. England, gosh, I guess what we call it. <laughs> and then, of course, this uh, conflict with the Spanish because they feel like, you know, the land, they were there. Oh, uh, you know, they were there, you know, as far as Europeans go, they were there first. The land was because of God and religion and so the English were coming over and taking uh, land away basically from uh from the Roman Catholic from the Pope. And so of course that uh made them mad and finish a lot of uh, the sea battles there off the coast of uh north off the northern coast there in the Atlantic Ocean and uh, you know the English are able um, uh, uh, you know, gain a foothold to that monopoly that the Spanish had on the Americas. All right, so once they gain that foothold, when we start seeing these colonies like the Chesapeake Bay, we see Maryland and Virginia and, and all those colonies we're talking about in our week one. Just stick around uh, for the next video, guys next video guys that is part two of our lecture and that is when we'll talk a little bit more about the people that and the english and the french coming over and establishing their colony so all right guys watching <laughs> for anything